Hello students, here is the proctored exam test 2 review. These, this video will take you through every question on the proctored exam test 2 review tutorial homework. There are 15 questions. On the actual proctored exam test 2, there will also be 15 questions. Question number 1 asks you to solve this equation with the square root property. If you recall, the square root property will take the square root of both sides of an equation. When I take the square root of the left, x minus 4 remains. The square root of the right is 2. However, you must remember to use positive and negative 2. Now this means you actually have two answers. x minus 4 would equal the positive 2 is one answer. Then also, x minus 4 equals the negative 2 is the second answer or solution. To finish it out, just simply add 4 to both sides of your equation. x is equal to 6. If you add 4 to both sides of the second equation, x is equal to 2. Your solution set then would be 6 and 2. When you type that answer into the answer box, just be sure you put a comma in between, and the order does not matter. The second problem on the practice test, as is the proctored exam, asks you to solve this equation by completing the square. So let me just take this over and rewrite the problem a bit. I'm going to rewrite it as x squared plus 10x equals negative 11. In essence, I have moved the 11 over to the right-hand side. Now, to complete the square, you will take the center coefficient, the coefficient of the x. And I'm going to take half of that, so 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5. And I'm going to square that to get 25. And I'm going to add the 25 back into this equation on both sides, plus 25 on the left, plus 25 on the right. Now remember, this little process is where the magic happens. So you will divide by 2, then you will square that result, and then you will add that result back into your equation on both sides. The reason we do this strange process is because now the trinomial x squared plus 10x plus 25 is a perfect square. It will factor perfectly as x plus 5, x plus 5, or x plus 5 quantity squared. Also, on the right-hand side, we now add the negative 11 and the 25, in essence, you subtract, that will give us 14. From here, we will finish the process by taking the square root property and the square root of both sides. So I have x plus 5 equals plus or minus square root 14, and then I can simply subtract the 5. So x is equal to negative 5 plus or minus square root 14. That solution represents the two separate answers. Now these two separate answers will be written as two separate answers as you see here on answer choice B. Question number three asks you to use the quadratic formula. Now this formula will be given to you on the proctored exam, so you do not have to memorize it, but if you have memorized it, you recall that the solution or the answer will be in the form negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now the a, b, and c come from the coefficients. So in this original question, the a would be an understood 1. We'll use a 1. So we're going to let a equal 1. The b would be the x coefficient. So b will equal to 7. The c is the constant. So c will be 3. 
Now substitute each of these values into the quadratic formula to get negative 7 plus minus square root 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times 3 all over 2 times 1. So notice that the 7 became negative because it was negative b, and it's also over here is 7 squared, which is b squared. The a is a 1 both in the numerator and denominator, and the c is only listed once in the formula, and that is 3. Now we will simplify. So under the radical, I would have 49 minus 12 by multiplying the 4 times the 1 times the 3. In the denominator, I simply have 2. If I simplify further, I have negative 7 plus or minus square root, and that would give me 37 over 2. Now this is simplified completely so that we can look over here to find the correct answer. If you look closely, the answer choice here would be A, which has the two solutions, the plus minus solution, separated. So look, make sure it has the negative 7 and also the square root of 37. Question number 4 asks you to use the Pythagorean theorem and the square root property to solve a word problem. Remember the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared for some right triangle. Now this word problem says that we have a rectangular park, so I'm going to draw out a rectangle, and the park is 10 miles long, and it is 5 miles wide. And we want to know how long is a pedestrian route that runs diagonally across the park. So you see this forms a right triangle. It actually forms two of them. So if you think about it, the sides are A and B, and I am looking for the C, which is the hypotenuse, or the longest side. So I would set this up as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In my problem, it would be 5 squared plus 10 squared equals c squared. Now when I simplify, that will give me 25 plus 100, which is 125. Now the square root property says I can take the square root of both sides. You do not have to do the plus minus because this is measurement, so it's always positive. This would be the square root of 125. Now 125, if you divide it, is 25 times 5. And then you see 25 is a perfect square. So we would simplify that and say, okay, the square root of 25 is 5, and then I have this extra 5. So I would write the radical form like this. So in simplified radical form, it would be 5 square root of 5. Now, rounded to the nearest tenth, I would need to put this in my calculator. So using a scientific calculator of your choice, do not use your cell phone calculator, that will not be allowed. You will need to find the square root of the 125. I happen to be using a Texas Instruments calculator here, and I have the square root of 125, and I get the decimal 11.1803399, and it says round to the nearest tenth, so that would be here, one place behind the decimal, that is 11.2. And again, this both represents miles. Question number five is similar to number four because we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. But the picture this time talks about a building of some sort. Okay. And it has this ladder that's leaned up against the building. And of course, the ground is at the bottom. The base of the 12-foot ladder, so the ladder is 12 feet, is 3 feet from the building. So it's placed 3 feet from the bottom of the building. If the ladder reaches a flat roof, well, I didn't quite draw it tall enough, it says how tall is the building? 
let me adjust this building. Here's my flat roof and the ladder's going to the top. There we go. Now, we are looking for this particular side. So think about this right triangle now very carefully. I am missing a side. I have one small side of three, but the hypotenuse is 12. So be careful when you set up a squared plus b squared equals c squared, because we know the c. The c is a 12. And then three would be one side, and the missing side would be the other. So let me work this out. If I simplify and then solve for b, I end up with b squared equals 135. Now I can take the square root of both sides. And if you think about it, 135 will divide. That is 5 times 27. And then 27 is 3 times 9. Aha! 9 is a perfect square right there. So when I simplify, I can take the square root of 9, which is 3. I have the extra 3 and the extra 5 that I put back together, so that'd be 15. So my radical answer is 3 square root 15. So an exact answer using radicals, that would be 3 square root 15. Now the height of the building using the calculator, you just find your calculator, scientific calculator, take the square root of 135. So let me do that real quickly on my calculator and I end up with 11.6, rounded off to one decimal. So that would be 11.6 feet. In this problem, we are going to solve by factoring. So we must go ahead and move over all the terms to the left of the equal sign. Let me just rewrite that out here as x to the third plus x squared minus 4x minus 4 equals 0. Now the best way to factor four-term polynomial is to factor by grouping. So I'm going to split this problem down the middle and use grouping. In the first two terms, I notice that x squared is a common factor, and that will leave x plus 1. Then in the second two terms, second part of this problem, I notice I have a negative 4 that is in common. So I'm basically dividing both these terms by negative 4. That will leave x plus 1. Now if you step back and look, the x plus 1 is common. So factor that out to the front. When you factor out the x plus 1 from the first and second halves, that will leave x squared minus 4. Now you can factor x squared minus 4 as the difference of two squares. Because positive 2 times negative 2 would give me negative 4. Since I have three factors, I'm going to get three answers. If I take each factor, and set it equal to zero, then I can complete the solving process. If I subtract the one, x is equal to negative one. That's a solution. Subtract the two, x is equal to negative two. That's another solution. Add the two, x is equal to positive two. So this solution has three answers. Just make sure you put commas in between each one. Now for this problem, we have to solve the radical equation and it says to check all the solutions that we find. The reason we check it is to make sure that it's not an extraneous or one of those extra solutions that doesn't really check in the original problem. So let's go for it. To get rid of the square root, I'm gonna square both sides. That will give me 5x plus 50 equals x squared because the square cancels out the square root symbol. Now I'm going to move all of my terms to one side. I find it easier to leave the x squared where it's at and simply subtract the 5x and subtract the 50. 
Now, from here, I could see if this will factor. Let's see if it will. Uh, what are the factors of 50? How about 10 times 5? So we have x times x. Since it's a negative 50, I know that'll be a negative 10 and a positive 5. If I check this, that's positive 5x and negative 10x, which is indeed my negative 5x. So this is factored properly. Now I take each factor, just like the previous problem, and put it equal to 0 to finish the solving. If I add 10, one answer is positive 10. If I subtract the 5, the second answer is negative 5. But whoa, hold on a minute. We have to check these because they may not check in the original problem. If I check the 10, you could just use your calculator even to check it. Let me go ahead and quickly just type this in to check. That's 50 plus 50 is the square root of 100. And the square root of 100 is 10. And that's what we said it is when we plug in the 10. So the 10 does check. But now if I check that negative 5, let's see what we get for that. All right, that's negative 25 plus 50, which is 25. But the square root of 25 is normally 5, not negative 5. Notice that the negative 5 did not check. So do not include that answer. Only choose answer choice C here. Okay, this is another radical equation that we need to go ahead and solve, and we must check the solutions. We saw just a minute ago that all of the answers do not always check. So I will square both sides to get this started. When I do that, it cancels the radical sign. So I have 2x plus 13. And over on the other side, I have x plus 5 squared. Now remember, that's x plus 5 times itself. So you're going to have to do the FOIL method and go ahead and multiply that out. So I end up with x squared, 5x, 5x, 25. Again, that's with the FOIL method. I'm bringing everything down. And I need to whew, combine some terms. Let me go ahead and combine those 5x's first. Then I'm going to subtract the 2x on both sides so that that cancels. And I'm going to subtract the 13 on both sides so that that cancels, leaving 0. So I have 10 minus 2 would give me 8x. 25 minus 13 is going to give me positive 12. Now, 6 times 2 is 12, and 6 plus 2 would be the middle term 8. So that will factor perfectly. x times x is x squared. Positive 6 times positive 2 is positive 12. And when you add them, that's 8. So if I take my x plus 6, put it equal to 0. x plus 2, put that equal to 0. And I'm going to solve each one. I end up with negative 6 as an answer and negative 2 as an answer. But hold on again. We have to check these. So let's go ahead and check the negative 6. If I take the negative 6 and plug it into the original problem, it looks like this. So that's negative 12 plus 13, which is the square root of 1, which is 1. But see, when I add the negative 6 plus 5, that's negative 1. That's not true. So the negative 6 did not check. Let's see if the other answer will check. Let me plug it into the original problem. So I'm taking the negative 2 now, and I'm plugging it into the original problem. Substitute it in. So that's negative 4 plus 13, which is square root of 9, which is a 3. And over here, negative 2 plus 5 is also 3. Yes, that one checked. So the only correct answer would be the single answer of negative 2. Be careful on checking when they tell you to check it. On this question, we're asked to solve with rational exponents. I always like these because the fractions cancel out automatically. Here's what you do. 
you take each side of the equation and put a parenthesis around it. Then take the reciprocal or the flip of that fraction. Instead of five over two, you will replace that with two over five. Now notice the twos cross cancel, the fives cross cancel with all those fractions, leaving x minus six, and you may drop the parenthesis now. On the other side, that was 32 to the exponent 2 fifths. Now, if you have a scientific calculator, you can quickly put this into the calculator. I happen to have a TI calculator, a Texas Instruments, and I will type that in as 32 and then exponent key and then two over five. You could do a parenthesis two divided by five or depending on the calculator, you may have one that will do fractions and it'll have two ABC five and then hit equals. When you do that, you will end up with the answer four. Now you may wonder how in the world do you get four out of that? Well, if you work this out by hand instead of the calculator, the bottom number is an index number. It tells you to take the fifth root of 32. And then that top part of the exponent is a square. It is a true power or exponent. Now the fifth root of 32 is two because if you divide 32, that's four times eight, which is two times two, and that's two times two times two. Notice that I have five, a set of five twos. That's why it's a perfect fifth root. And that's why it would be two squared or four. So whether you work this in the calculator or by hand, you should get four there. Now, to finish it out, let's solve for x. I'm gonna add six and x is going to equal to 10. Now this answer is true. You don't necessarily have to plug it back in to check it. That was not given in the directions, but you can always check any of these problems. Now on this problem, you could solve it either by factoring or as suggested, make a substitution. When we make a substitution, it means to take the variable in the center of the problem and replace that with a different letter. I'm gonna go ahead and just substitute that with the letter T. So if I rewrite this original problem, instead of negative 13 X squared, I'm gonna write negative 13 T. So I'm gonna let the letter T equal the X squared in this problem. And I bring down the 36 and the zero. Now think about it. If X squared is a single T, then X to the fourth would be t twice. So this is what I now have. I will solve this by factoring. Always check to see if a trinomial will factor because that's normally the quickest way to solve. t times t is t squared. Uh, 4 times 9 gives me 36 and 4 plus 9 would be 13. However, notice that 13 is negative so that means I need to put negative signs there. If I set each of these factors equal to zero, I end up with two answers. T would be positive four and T is positive nine. Now the question did not originally have the T in it. So now I need to go back and if you would resubstitute we have to put the x's back in there. So t is equal to x squared. My first t was a four. If four is equal to x squared, and I now put the x squared in, then I can take the square root of both sides, and the square root of that would be plus or minus two. So I have answers of positive two and negative two. Also, remembering that t is x squared and now t is nine, I can take the square root and I end up with plus and minus three. Two more answers. So this problem had a huge solution set of four solutions. 
Here's another question on using the substitution method. Again, I will take the variable in the center and I'm just going to let that be a different letter. I'm going to choose to use the letter t. So let's let the t this time equal the square root of x. Then I will rewrite the equation. So I have negative 13t, I have a positive 40, and that x is actually the square root twice. So I'm going to put t squared. You'll notice that that pattern normally pops up. Now let's try the factoring to see if this trinomial will factor. t times t is t squared. Now if you think of the factors of 40, you might be thinking 4 times 10, but that does not add up to be 13. So I'm going to go with the 8 and the 5. 8 times 5 is 40. 8 plus 5 is 13. And I just need to put negatives in front of there to make that be a negative 13. So on this first factor, the solution would be 8 when I solve for t. On the second factor, my solution is 5 when I solve for t. But now wait a minute, the original problem did not have t inside of it. So we have to go back and re-substitute to get the answer for the x. Remember, originally we said t is going to equal to square root of x. Well, my first t was an 8. So I'm going to go in here and square both sides. And that would give me x equals 64. Then my second time, the second solution for t was a 5. So I'll go in here and square both sides. x is equal to 25. Now if we quickly check these answers, uh, I didn't necessarily say to check it, but anytime I work a problem with a radical in it, I'm a little bit leery, so I'm going to check that. I would have 64 minus 13 square root 64 plus 40 equals 0. So that's 64 minus 13 times 8 plus 40. And I can just quickly put that in my calculator. So hold on a minute. 64 minus 13 times 8 plus 40. And I do get 0. Okay, that makes me feel better. If I check the other one, 25 minus 13 square root 25 plus 40 equals 0. So that'd be 25 minus 13 times 5 because the square root of 25 is 5. So let me type that in. 25 minus 13 times 5 and plus 40. Okay, that gives me 0 also. Yay. Whew. So both these solutions are true. It would be 64 and 25. All right, in this problem, we're solving a system, and we're going to use the substitution method, and it's set up perfectly for that. You see how the second equation, y, is equal to negative 2x plus 16. I will take that negative 2x plus 16 and substitute it into the first equation. When I do that, here's what we get. x minus 2 times negative 2x plus 16, and that's equal to negative 2. All of this that's been substituted was the original y. Now I will solve. If I use a distributive property, I end up with 4x and negative 32. Okay, x and 4x would just give me 5x. Then I could add 32 or just move that over to add it. 5x is equal to 30, so x is equal to 6. And that would be the solution for the x. Now you will notice it says to type it as an ordered pair. So the 6 is the first number in the ordered pair. What you can do is go back and substitute the answer that you get, x equals 6, into that second equation. Remember that second equation, what we had. So I'm going to plug in a 6 and see what we get. 
All right, negative 12 plus 6, that would be negative 6. So y coordinate is negative 6. Make sure you type this in as an ordered pair with the parentheses and the comma. Okay, now we're going to solve another one of these with the substitution method. And this time, notice they're both equal to x. So I will take one of the equations and substitute that into the x of the other equation. So here's what we get. We will have 9y minus 3 equals 4y plus 2. This 9y minus 3 was the x in the first problem. We will now solve. To solve this, I would add 3 to both sides of the equation. And then I would subtract the 4y. Pretty simple. At least I hope you find it that way. Last but not least, let's divide out that y. And y is going to equal to 1. But remember, that should be an ordered pair. So this means the 1 is the second number or coordinate in the ordered pair. To get the x, we would go back and substitute the first answer. So let me just take that first equation, although it doesn't matter which one you use, to substitute back into. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. So the x coordinate is 6. You would have gotten the same answer if you had chosen the second original equation to plug back into. So write it as an ordered pair with comma in the middle and parentheses. This question 14 asks us to use the addition method on the system. The addition method lines up the like terms which they are already lined up. And it will add the like terms. So I will add the 3x and the 4x that will give me 7x. Notice when I add the positive 6y and the negative 6y, I get 0. So I can cancel those. Bring down the equal sign and then add the 12 plus the 16 is 28. I just love this method. Divide by the coefficient 7 and x is equal to 4. But remember, this has to be an ordered pair. So the 4 is only the first number in that ordered pair. You will get the y value, the second number in that ordered pair, by going back to either equation and substitute what we know. So I'll take that first equation and plug the 4 in for the x. And we'll figure out what this y is. 3 times 4 is 12. And then when I subtract that on both sides, you'll notice it cancels. So 6y equals 0. If you divide by 6, y is equal to 0. So my y coordinate is 0, and be sure to type it as an ordered pair. Number 15 is the last one on the practice test tutorial, and it'll be the last problem on the real proctored test number 2. Um, here we go. This one is not, I mean, the like terms are lined up, but nothing really cancels out. So what I think I'll do is if you notice 21 and 7 are multiples of each other. Let me go ahead and multiply this second equation by a negative 3 and watch what will happen. If I distribute a negative 3, then that 7x goes to negative 21x. Then I have negative 21y. And then I have negative 21. It's just kind of weird that you had all 7s and now all 21s. Then bring over that top equation as it is. When I line everything up, you'll notice the 21x's cancel out. So I'll be left with negative 24y and negative 96. When I divide by negative 24, negative 96 divided by my negative 24, then that will give me a positive 4. So my solution set as an ordered pair is going to have 4 in the y's place. To get that x, you'll have to plug back in. So we're going to substitute 
what we know. I think I'll use the second equation. It's smaller numbers. <coughs> Excuse me. 7x plus 7 times 4 equals 7. Um, that's going to give me 28 there. And then I subtract that 28. So 7x equals negative 21. Divide by 7. x equals negative 3. So that's worked out, and my x coordinates negative 3. Be sure to write it as an ordered pair. Now, this should adequately prepare you for your proctored exam. As you see, the only two formulas that you will need will be the quadratic formula and the Pythagorean theorem formula. Both of those will be given to you on the test. However, if you want to go ahead and memorize them, that would be great too. Good luck on your proctored exam. When you go to take it, you'll just log into my math lab and click on proctored exam, which is our test two in here. Remember the first test, you already took it home and you should do great. If you have any questions, just message me, call me, come by the Wesson campus and see me. Good luck, everybody.